Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to the second module of SOAP UI training. In this, I'll be starting with the Groovy scripting, Groovy scripting introduction. The Groovy scripting is required to validate all your web services when you are testing with SOAP UI. Fine. To implement the logics of programming language, you actually use Groovy scripting. Groovy scripting is actually a language which is running on the top of JVM, that is Java Virtual Machine. Fine. You'll soon realize it when I start it. Right. So, it's not a tough language, right? Don't be afraid to learn it, learn any programming language. If you are afraid, right, you will not be able to do anything, right? Like, I've seen many people, they are not so comfortable with programming language and then uh, they actually um, end up losing interest just because of their fear. Fear takes you nowhere, fine? So, just be patient, give some time to it, okay? Let me open SOAP UI, uh, that is the open source version, right? And I'll start with the groovy scripting, okay? So let it open. Hold on. So it's a tool by Smart Bear. Fine. So uh, look, the thing is, uh, Groovy is an object-oriented programming language. It is similar to Java. Fine. Objects are there. Everything is there inside it. Right. Now to start with, we'll start with very very simple things. I'll make a new SOAP UI project, and I'll just make the project name as Training Module. Okay, this is my project. Right now, uh, why do we need scripting or programming language? This is a very simple and very straightforward answer question which a lot, lot of people they ask me. Fine, this is the project. Right, in this project, we will be testing web services. Fine, now, uh, why do we why do you use programming language? It is very simple when you are sending an XML document from one node to another node. Fine, and when you're getting the response, suppose you want to validate the tags in the XML response, then you need all those programming logics. Okay, find the value inside a particular tag or extract the value from this tag or that tag. Then you will need knowledge of programming language. Okay, and SOAPUI guys, they have used Groovy script as the language. Fine. Okay, so for, for example, um, Taking up a very simple example like the request.xml and response.xml which we had made that day. Suppose this is the response.xml. If I open up in the browser, so you have a response like this, right? Now you want to find out whether the cost tag is coming up in the response or not. Or you want to find out the value of the start time tag. So how will you read it? Okay, how will you read it? Fine, I have an Excel file, suppose this is my Excel file in which I have written that fine the cost should come up as one thousand dollars so this is my expected data fine the actual data is coming up over here so you want to compare the actual data from expected data generate reports and all all that stuff generate logs so for that we use groovy scripting inside soap ui fine so i hope you got my logic that why do we need a scripting or a programming language okay now the first thing which you need to do inside SOAP UI is that you need to build test cases, test suites, test steps. Now what are these? Alright. Now there are various levels in SOAP UI. Alright. Let me talk about the levels in SOAP UI. The first level is the project level. It's not actually the first level but still like initially you have the project level. Then you have test suite level. Then you have test case level. And then you have test step level. Fine. In the test step level, you actually end up using Groovy. Okay. Right. It's very logical. Many of you might be able to understand. Fine. It's quite simple. This is the project level training module 2. This is my project level. If I right click over here, you will get the option new test suite. You can create multiple test suites inside one test case. Oh, sorry, inside one project. Fine. So if I create a new test suite, say test suite A, right? You can create it. So this will be the window representing the test suite. And if you expand it, you will see that this is the project level, this is the test suite level. Inside a test suite, you can have multiple test cases. Fine. Similarly, like I can add one more test suite, like uh, suite B, and I can add another one, test suite C. 
So inside each of these test suites, you can have multiple test cases. Inside test suite A, I can have a new test case known as, say, uh, test case 1 only. Fine. So this is my test case level. This is my project level, test suite level, test case level. Later on, we will be seeing the interactions between all the three levels. Okay, you can interact, you can store variables, properties at different levels and you can use them. We look at them in the coming modules. Fine. Under the test case level, you have the test step level. Right? If you right click on uh, the test case, you get the option add test step. These are all the test steps which you can add in the open source version of SOAP UI. In the paid version of SOAP UI, you have got many more options. Fine. For example, uh, a simple test request. This represents a basic SOAP request which you want to send or a groovy script test step. This is the one which you will be studying right now. Okay, there are many other test steps as well, like manual, AMF, JDBC, mock response, HTTP, REST. Okay, depending on the protocol which you are using, fine. But with any protocol you use, you will definitely need this test step known as the Groovy Script test step. In this Groovy Script test step, you actually write your Groovy scripting. Fine, I'll just write Groovy Script 1, and you will actually end up having this particular test step. Okay, so if you look at your project carefully, this is the project, this is the test suite, this is the test case and inside it you have the groovy script test step. Out here you write your groovy scripting. Fine, you, you, you write all the coding over here. That is the groovy coding. Fine, similarly in test suite B as well I can create a new test case, say test case 2. And under this test case you can create another test step called as groovy script 2. Fine. So we have got something like this over here. These are the two test steps, Groovy script test steps which I have created. Fine. So you can write Groovy script in each of them. And later on, we will also see that both of them can also interact with each other. The Groovy script written in the test script one can be, can call the Groovy script written in the script two. Fine. Basically, what I mean to say is that one test case can call the other test case. Okay, can take the help of the other test case, whatever it is. So these kinds of interactions ca can be done. Fine, and it's a very powerful tool, uh, SOAP UI. Alright, now, um, Groovy script test step, that's what I told you in this, you actually write your Groovy script. Now when you run your Groovy, when you write your Groovy script, okay, you, the first thing which you need to understand is that there is a log object in SOAP UI. How do you print basic things? Okay, if you look at, uh, for example, in C language, printf is the command to print something. In Java, it is system.out.println, right? Uh, so in Groovy, you have something known as log object, right? You have the log object. You see the text written on the top. It's clearly written, script is invoked with log, context, and test runner variables. Fine. Let me talk about the log variable over here. If I write out here, log dot info is the command I type hello soap UI and if I run this to run this you, this is the green icon you click on this and this will be executed and at the bottom you see the output over here and hello soap UI would be written in the output fine so this is the initial object which you use that is log dot info this is used to print something okay and moreover if you go to the installation directory where SOAP UI is installed, alright, for example, uh, in our case, <coughs> sorry, it is installed in G drive, program file, smart bear, SOAP UI, and you have to go inside the bin directory of SOAP UI, okay, you will have a SOAP UI dot log file generated over here. If you open up this log file, you will see that hello soap UI is also printed inside this text file. So inside the soap UI logs which are out here also, the logs will be printed. Fine and if you want to physically open the file you can open it or you can see the logs generated in this log output one section out here. Okay, so this is the basic soap UI uh, log object. Fine, now on top if this is uh, groovy scripting then Groovy scripting is actually running on the top of Java, JVM. Fine, it is actually Java which is, or Java virtual machine which is actually running Groovy scripting. So this language, Groovy, it is very, very similar to Java language. 
all right if you know java then you will it's it will be very very easy for you to learn groovy okay because the in internal engine is the java engine right so there are two types of logs info logs and error logs in soap ui fine when i write log dot info some hello soap ui if you look at the bin folder in soap ui dot log you will have the normal info logs this is the info log all right and there is one more file known as soap ui error logs in which all the errors will come up fine if you if something happens while executing the script and all all these errors will come up look that's the, the difference in the free version of soap ui you just have these two log files in which the log keeps on appending that means the older log if i run the script once the log will be written in this file and in this file if i run the script again the logs will be appended in this file new file will not be generated so you'll have the old file logs as well as new logs inside the same file and that's the problem with the free version right in the paid version a new log file is generated every time so you have got control over it all that stuff so these are simple and minor differences which we can also correct that's not a big deal okay so that's what i was telling you that out here you have got this error log in which errors will come up normal info logs in which all dot log log dot info commands will come up right so another important thing is that when you work with soap ui is auto saving the project all right when you have a soap ui project and if you close this open source soap ui project without saving it it will be lost right so to prevent that we have got a feature of auto saving in soap ui you have you just have to go to this command over here file preferences and under ui settings you can uh, auto save your project this is the auto saving in interval you can make this interval as say 10 so after every 10 minutes or so the project will be saved automatically okay you can also create backups and all whatever you want through create backup option fine but this is important if you don't auto save your project then the open source version of soap ui will simply delete the files when you close the project and all the all your hard work will be lost okay auto saving is very important fine so we studied about groovy scripting we studied about why groovy scripting is used various uh, test levels uh, in soap ui right jvm runs what is the log object you have to auto save the project now we will look at what is a variable in groovy this to start with now if you have, if you have studied any programming language then in every any programming language you have got integers bytes strings and all all that stuff in soap ui we have kept it quite simple you just have to write a define x equals to 100 x becomes an integer if i write define y equals to hello world y becomes a string fine if i write define z equals to 100 point this thing this becomes a decimal number so this is the define keyword which is used to initialize a variable or an object or whatever you want to fine this is very important define okay 